takes this ball hard out to right center field. That's trouble. It's gone. Boy, he just lined one out of here. 22nd of the year for Alvarez. And he makes it 2 nothing, Houston. Goodness me. Goodness me indeed, because the Houston Astros, for the eighth straight year, possess the coveted silver boot. They get it with a win over the South Oklahoma Arlington Rangers yesterday. Six to three, the final score, I believe six to four, whatever. They had a five nothing lead at one point. They hold on for the victory. And everything is right in the world once again, Joe George. Yeah, as long as, you know, Silverboot stays home, that's what matters right now. Jordan Alvarez, goodness me, what a way to end a call. Just, he's so sad, such a sad man. I, I feel bad about this because I believe that Dave Raymond lived here in Houston for a while calling Astros games. But over the last couple of years, when I discovered that my Fubo TV subscription includes the calls of Texas Rangers broadcasts, there is a very, very small part of my brain that lives to hear Dave Raymond be miserable when the Astros do something to the Rangers. So I guess something, if, if like bases are loaded, are you, you're, you're flipping over so you can hear the sadness? If the game gets out of hand, no offense to Todd Callis, Syracuse guy, Jeff Blum, close personal friend, Julia Morales, we've interacted before. I flip it over to watch the Rangers broadcast because it tends to get a little bit whiny. Yeah, it's very, it's very sad boy. Yeah. It's not soft boy. It's just, it's just sad boy. Goodness me. I, I, I think we should, we should start using goodness me more often. Just start working that into the show. Tio Smeal. <laughs> Regularly. Yeah. Just all give a bad take, and you just go, goodness me. Goodness me is a very white way to say, oh, my. Yes, it's a very, very white way to say it. Mm -hmm. But, hey, you know what? They won the game yesterday. Jordan Alvarez, two games in a row with a home run. That thing was a line drive right yeah. out of the park. I didn't think that was going to leave. It uh -uh. Just, that was a laser. And that's the deepest part of the ballpark. The low trajectory with which Alvarez hit that bad boy. Truly impressive to make it leave the yard. So, the Astros are now back in first place by more than just percentage points. Now by a full half game, which doesn't make any sense, but it's more than .001. So now, we take a look at what happened yesterday. And once again, it was Yusei Kikuchi with a almost quality start. Not quite six innings. Eight punch outs, or as Joe Espada calls them, punchies along the way. Here he is wrapping up a strikeout of the side in the fourth inning. Got him. Caratini with another fist pump after an inning ending strikeout. Simeon struck out to end the third, and now Kikuchi with three more strikeouts in the fourth. No one liked the Yusei Kikuchi trade when it first happened. Giving up three prospects for a rental was our biggest issue. People fell in love with Joey Loperfito, who was a summer fling the first couple of months of his major league career. Jake Bloss, I mean, he only was drafted last year. Maybe he has potential past what we saw from him at the major league level if he's already pitching less than a year into his professional career. And then you got rid of Will Wagner. To be honest, no one really cared about that one. Sorry, Will. We, in the moment... I would say collectively, people who follow the Houston Astros freaked out. About 16 to 24 hours later, I think we were all a little bit more measured, for the most part. And now we're seeing, Joe, people start to change their tune, whether it's Ben Verlander, who had a strong reaction to the trade in the moment and is a national baseball analyst. Maybe not a great sign for baseball analysis that the little brother of a good major leaguer is a great major leaguer, a hall of fame, major leaguer. One of the best pitchers of his era is a go-to source of analysis. Uh, some are doing victory laps. I, I saw our friend, uh, Charlie Palillo for the sports map, which is in our building, essentially saying that 
Joey Loperfito is not Joe DiMaggio. Yes. In as many words. All of a sudden, are we all okay with the Yusei Kikuchi trade, which for now is a rental? I think you have to be you, you have to be more okay with it. You don't have to be fully on board still. It, you can have your reservations about trading the prospects, but still at the same time be very, very happy with the results that you've gotten because it's still just two starts. You know, if, if we just assumed everything was the way it was after two starts, then Ronald Blanco would have won the Cy Young this year. Um, Hunter Brown would have been cut last year at, at some point. Like, things can go good and bad, but this trade has worked out really well for you so far. You say Kikuchi has been awesome. The way that they've changed his delivery, and not, not his delivery, but what his pitch usage has clearly helped him tremendously. And and the reason, you know, it's there's nothing wrong with flipping on it when everyone, like you said, had the had the negative reaction. Any moment everyone yes. was mad. You look at the athletic or ESPN.com, every single trade deadline grade reaction was C minus D, just a normal C <laughs> for this trade. It was not well received across locally, nationally, anywhere. There, there were a few measured people. I, I'll give credit to Todd the show on our Twitch, but for the most part, the reaction ranged from what the hell? Huh? All that for a rental with an ERA close to five to what are they doing? Dana Brown sucks. Fire him. It was that kind of range. And I mean, through two starts. No quality starts yet, but he's getting close to six innings, which is much more than Jake Bloss was giving you. And he's also, along the way, giving you 19 strikeouts. And he's been really impressive. Like, it's not even just the strikeouts. He's just finding a way to just get out in, in, in a bunch of different manners, whether it's – and the strikeouts has obviously led the way for him. It's just he looks like a different player. And and part of it is, is like, I, I always reference back to what they shoved down our throat for two years which is back of the baseball card. It wasn't just the high ERA that he had in 2024. It's what he's done for most of his career. He's a four to five plus ERA guy. His only season so far where he's at a below four ERA is in 2023 for an entire season. Trading for a guy like that when you when your pitching staff is struggling is not going to come with like a parade of happiness for your organization. There's always going to be a sense of pessimism when you trade for a guy who's consistently below average. And that's what he has been in his career. In two starts here, maybe Miller and Murphy in the analytics department like really have fixed this guy. I we'll see. It, you hope Miller and Murphy, have. first names for everybody. Uh, Josh Murphy. And I don't know. Okay, gotcha. They're just, sorry, sorry. They're both the the two pitching coaches. This is something this time slot has an issue with. Not not specifically you. I know when yeah, whenever yeah. we have DJ on, DJ will just say guys by the first name, and I'm like yeah, I'm yeah. like, hey, I, I don't know who that is. So, so the two pitching the coaches, the two pitching coaches. Yes. There we go. Okay, cool. But if they fixed them, awesome. If he's this guy, you are you are in a, a whole different atmosphere of starting pitching. If he can be this guy, I don't care about quality starts. He threw 100 pitches. He struck out eight guys. He gives you five and a third. Your bullpen should be good enough consistently, specifically the back end of it with Presley, Abreu, and Hayter to where you can, you know, and Taylor Scott to where that's fine. If he's giving you five and a third, you should be able to get it done on a pretty consistent basis. I'll admit I'm still skeptical. Same. He has had two great starts, but the Rangers offense this year, it's not the same. I don't know what happened. And the Tampa Bay Rays... They have stripped a lot of parts. Kikuchi's next scheduled start, get this, ideal for him, is against the Tampa Bay Rays August 13th. I don't know if Justin Verlander is going to be back, so this will change the math, but if you take a look ahead of the schedule and just assume, okay, five starts from that. It's Monday, August 19th against the Boston Red Sox, who are having a very good season. The Red Astros are going to play them in Boston this weekend. Uh, I mean, compared to the expectations, no one thought Boston would do a damn thing. They're actually a pretty good hitting team. And then, either you fast forward five starts or uh, four starts, depending on whether or not the Astros go to a six-man rotation, the next outing for Kikuchi is going to be against the Baltimore Orioles. I feel like we can all maybe properly evaluate what this trade was, if it was too much, if Kikuchi's actually going to contribute. 
after what happens in those two starts against Boston, against Baltimore. And I truly do not know what happens in them. There's an off chance as well that if the Astros stick to the five-man rotation that we could see him Monday, August 19th against the Red Sox. We could see him Saturday, August 24th against the Orioles and then Wednesday, August 28th against the Phillies. Mm -hmm. Then we will really know what he is. But yeah. it depends on whether or not the Astros go to a six-man rotation. There's a part of me that hopes that they don't go to a six-man rotation just so that I can really know for sure. Three-game sample size against three teams that are good, that have good offenses. Then we will know whether or not Yusei Kikuchi has it. Because that was always my issue with him when he was in Seattle. It wasn't that he could put together amazing stretches. It's how did he do against good teams? What happened when he gets red ass on himself after giving up a couple of big hits. Yeah, and, and even if past that, Paul, like, it, it, even if he is successful in those starts, I think a lot of this trade still just, it matters what happens when you make the playoffs. Like, like this is not a team that has regular season just win the division expectations. No matter how the season has gone, no matter how much the offense has struggled, no matter how many pitching injuries you've had, you're the Houston Astros. Your expectations, our expectations, everyone in baseball's expectations is that you're going to go back to an ALCS for an eighth straight year. You, that's what the standard is for the organization. It's the standard. I don't know if I don't know if it's still the expectation, but it is the standard. So like, well, what is so what does he do in the ALDS? What does he do if you, if they get to the ALDS? They gotta get, they gotta get there. Like to that the that to me is more. We'll, we'll tell the bigger picture of, of the story. I think a lot of it just goes back to you gave up three prospects for a guy who's not under control, who doesn't have great stats. If he's this guy, this is a home run of a trade. Honestly, if you make the playoffs. Because of the way the season has gone, it helps you even more. And if he's a big part of that, and right now he is. Like, like I, I where are you without him right now? You, your offense is struggling mightily. And in the two games, he's been absolutely dominant. And if it's Jake Bloss on the mound, instead of you say Kikuchi, you've lost those two games. And instead of being on a first place today, you're probably a game and a half out of first right now still.